Hi everybody, it's Jenny from the Missouri Star Quilt Company and I am super excited to be here today because it's Triple Play Day. Yay. Our favorite week. Our favorite week. <laughs> I'm here with Natalie and Misty and today we are talking about the Drunkard's Path, which we love. We seem to do one of those every year because it's just so versatile yeah. and we are going to start with Misty and her quilt. So Misty, you better get your stuff and All get back right. here. All right. Okay. All right, so this is my quilt. I called it Solstice and it's Pretty simple, just straightforward Drunkard's Path blocks. Um, I love it. Thank you. I love so it cute. too. And it was yeah. fun getting to pick some solid colors that I wanted to work with. And so I used all Kona solids and I just picked four, um, you know, for the big circles. And then I used black and snow for the background. And I used this pretty Essex linen on the back. Which oh, and I love that the quilting is a pattern. Color. I love that too. It just really ties it together. That's graphite, right? Yes. The it linen is. just gives it a little texture. A little texture, it's yeah. I, I think so too. Did I say the size? Yeah. Uh, did, no, I don't but think so. You can say it again. It, okay, it's 50 by 60. There great little go. lap size and it, uh, you know, just a quick one to make. So let me show you what you need. You need a half yard of each of those four colors for your circles. And for, for real, they could pick any colors. Any colors, yeah. absolutely. And then you'll need one and a quarter yard of your black and I believe it's three yards of your background. And like I said, I use snow and then we'll need the um, small Drunkard's Path template as well. So let me show you how to do this Drunkard's Path block. Awesome. So first I cut all of my colors since I did use yardage um, into five inch strips. And so I have my kind of burgundy color here and we'll just cut a few of these. Well, and if you leave them a strip, you can literally cut a stack at a time. E exactly. Yeah, and so that's pretty this convenient. is folded. There's a couple, so. Mm -hmm. Perfect. We'll just do that. And then for my background, I decided to make it a little bit larger. So this is actually a five and a half inch strip instead of our four and a half. But then this just fits on here just like so. I don't want to be on the fold though. So let me trim off this end and we'll go from here. I do love that we can just lay this on the five and a half inch mark. And yeah. Get that. Yeah, you that can corner. choose any size. Any size you want. And it was fun when I was designing this to play with the different sizes to yeah. see which one I liked best. Well, and like how much of an edge do you yeah. want? If you were doing a clamshell, you don't want any edge. But if you're doing, you know, something, something like, like this, this, you want a little more space between your Exactly. So like then that. I'm just sitting this right on that five and a half inch line. And I'll just cut gently around that curve and go like that. And I did keep it like this because then I could come back and set them and I didn't have a whole lot of waste oh, by that's going, really cool. yeah, going that's every smart. which way. Very so, smart. I like that. Awesome. And so then now I just take my pieces here mm -hmm. and for your circles and for every block, you're going to need four of each of them. Right. And I'm going to finger press in the middle just so I have that center line. And then I do the same thing on my quarter circle. And then I just line these up. And then do we have pins? I usually pin the middle. Let me look. Do you? Yeah, just that one pin. And then I found... Oh, over on your side, Nat. Okay. Got them right here. You don't have to pin, but I find yeah, it... You can stick a pin in that. It just keeps it all lined I, up for me. I always sew them opposite. With do you? Concave on the bottom. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Well, I'll I'll let you do that then. Okay. You can do it however you want. I'm just gonna. Flip I think it's good to practice this on this and uh, and try them different ways. Yeah, absolutely. Because I've tried both ways and I always come back to the other, the oh, opposite way. It's really? easier for my brain. Okay. But but like I, Jenny said, just try it because I think it works both directions. Yeah. Yeah, I think I usually do it the way Natalie does. Do you? I don't know, I'd have to sit down. My brain is going which way, which way, but maybe I do it both ways and don't, and even, don't realize. even realize. <laughs> yeah. Well, honestly, they both work. So yeah, Whichever at the end of the day, like. we're just trying to sew two pieces together. Yeah. I think maybe the reason that I did all of these this way is for some reason it's it's easier for me to see the dark underneath the white. Oh, interesting. And so then yeah. I can guide that on top of it. But uh -huh. I don't know. I. I actually noticed that um, one of our sewists puts a dot of glue. That works great. After she told us, I tried it. At the little corner, it. yeah. So when she puts them on like this, she puts a little dot of glue here that holds yep. that. Because I never pin. And, um, but it I, helps those edges line up. Right. And then right after she I shared that, um, she, I saw someone online glue the whole thing. They glue that whole curve. And oh. I was like, oh, that's interesting too. 
There you go. All right, and so you can see Natalie has sewn all the way around that. It looks beautiful, and if it looks wonky like this, you did it exactly right because we're just going to press it back. <laughs> and they press so they great. Press so great. You just press them. Yep. Just and like look how so. gorgeous. And then we're just going to put these together. I have a few ready. You might want to sew one more. Well, I have oh, a half. Oh, have that one. I have yeah. a half, so then we'll just go ahead and sew these two together. Wait, All before right. you sew those, yeah. um, I'm noticing, like, on the black ones right here, so did you literally just turn this? I did. I have some more of those ready, so That's we can... That's so cool. Yeah, they're just, just set differently. So if you want to sew those together, and then we'll sew it together like a four-patch. All right. I would love to. We do really enjoy the I do. Every time, I'm like, there's just so many possibilities. It's really a fun one to make. Yeah, I agree. I I always have. Do you want to press it or you want to just sew them together? Doesn't matter. I'll you let you just sew it then. Press and then we'll press. press. Yeah. She's living on the wild side. Absolutely. And then I'll grab you these other me. little little blocks. To show. To show. So it, it's really just two blocks. You have the circle that Natalie's working on. I need a helper because I don't know how to thread oh, this okay. machine. I can't. Is that where it goes? Oops. Nope. Just Either. straight down and then around the little hook. There. Okay. And then through the needle. Then, no here. Let this way? No. No, the other way. Okay. So yeah. you're going to, you just From go left here. To right. Let me do this. Well, thank you. Mama knows best. Mama yes. Mama knows best. Yes, you do. There we go. Thank you. All right. It's not my normal machine. I can work on it while it works, but... <laughs> So then while she's stitching that down, we can talk about this because there's really just these two blocks in the quilt. You have the circles that Natalie's sewing and then our little half moons. And they just set together instead of going in the middle like a circle, just like Jenny was saying. We're just going to flip this half around. Wow. And that's really it. And then I just spun the direction that they were in the quilt so you get lots of movement, which I thought was really fun. It is so great. Thank you. It's yeah. very modern looking and it just is beautiful. I love Thank it. Thank you. I was you really go. happy with that's how it ready. came together and it is really just as simple as that. So then it's set uh, five across by se uh, six down, not seven. So five by six and it comes together really quick and easy. I love that it. It's awesome. You. I love it too. It's a great quilt. Thank it you. It really is. And it's called Solstice. It's called Solstice. All well, right. And I think, Natalie, you're up next. All right. There I'm we go. Excited. So you're up, Natalie. All I right. love your quilt. So I'm so excited. Happy. I had a lot of fun doing this quilt. It's called, I called it Moonshine. Because nice. I think it's, you know, like yours, yours was Solstice. Yeah. I'm like these half moons and circles. Yes. It just reminds me of all that. So it's beautiful and It is gorgeous. Fun. It's really easy to make. Mm -hmm. You'll be surprised, I think. Awesome. All right. So um, what do you need? It ended up being 63 by 63, which is just a great little picnic quilt or Perfect lap size. size. Something to snuggle on the couch with. Yeah. Super yep. easy. And you could easily make it bigger or smaller. I had enough to do one more row, but I wanted to keep it square. Yeah. So I just, just did it. Just left it. Yeah, you know. I often do that too. Yeah. Yep. So it's six by six and... Anyways, very cool. All right, so to make my quilt, you're going to need one package of 10 inch squares, and I used um, the Paint Box Basic Coordinates. Uh -huh. I just think it's a really lovely color palette, and it's it by Robert Kaufman, Kona Cotton Solids. The background is um, a yard, and that includes your inner border, and that that's just these little two and a half inch oh, squares okay. and an inner border. Nice. I I figured up, um, you know, the little two and a half inch square packs that have mm -hmm. 84, the Robert Kaufman makes them. Yeah. That's the, exactly the perfect amount to do this quilt. Oh, Very cool. That's awesome. And so that would I love the pre-cuts. <laughs> yeah, you could just have like one little pack and probably a half yard for your inner border yeah. if you wanted to do that. Sounds perfect. The pre-cuts are so easy save to use. Save us a yeah. little time. Yeah, so less cutting, but if you want to save whatever, it's a it's a yard. Well, then maybe they want to use a different color. Right, right. So, so yeah, they, yeah, yeah, it could be anything. Yeah. Your outer border, I just went with a, a thin, it's a three inch, so this is two and a half and this is three. Nice. I thought it was kind of cute. A it's, good, it's a good framer. Yes. Yeah, three fourths of a yard. Yeah, and I love Super that quilting easy. pattern. I do too. Thank you. This one's called beaded and I think it's it's really pretty. It it's is really pretty. cute. What oh, did, what backing, did you on the back? Yeah. I actually went with this really great cave backing. Oh, that's so fun. Oh, I, I love thought that. it was really cool and kind it of takes all the colors blended yeah. with all the all colors. Yeah. And this is available in a 108, which I thought was That's great. That's awesome. No. I love when we can find a 108. Yeah. yeah. But if you're just doing 45, you need four yards. If you're doing 108, two yards will be plenty. Nice. Perfect. So, and... 
the Drunkard's Path. Of course. Small, same as Misty, <laughs> template A and B. All right, well, I'm excited to show you guys how to do it. Let's get started. Okay. Okay, first thing we're gonna do is just cut a few two and a half inch squares from our background fabric so we have those ready to go. And I'm gonna just fold this in half and cut a strip. So out of each two and a half inch strip, you're gonna get about 16, 16. Yeah. Uh, two and a half inch squares. Yeah. And so that's always good to know when you're figuring things out. Mm -hmm. I'm one of those who kind of cuts a strip as I go. Um, yeah, we'll do that. We'll do that today because we're only going to need a couple of them. Some people like to cut everything out first. I like it all cut out, but I just get tired of cutting. <laughs> yeah. I hear that. And your little border is two and a half as well, isn't it? It is, yeah. yeah. The inner so border is two and a half, so all of your background. two and a half inch strips. That's yeah. right. Oops, don't get them crooked. <laughs> that's good, that's good. And then I'm just going to cut off that fold. This so really is a pretty palette. Yeah, it's so happy. It is great. So I just cut the entire palette. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. We'll go with maybe like uh, Ooh, this. It matches bold. me. Yes. This one matches exactly. <laughs> Look at that. There we go. That's a perfect match. And I wonder then, what color that really is. <laughs> oh, I can look it up. It takes a minute to find it, though. <laughs> no, it's all right. D not now. Oh, okay. Later. 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 We'll have a moment later right. when we talk about my color of my shirt. <laughs> <laughs> so I did, I did go through and cut the entire pack, and I separated my, um, my little inside circles. What do you call it? A quarter circle? Yeah. That was very, it sounded very scientific. Oh, I was like, perfect. Okay, I like that. But um, I didn't even realize I said it. Yeah. <laughs> You're Anyways. so smart. So the first thing I did is I cut using the nine and a half because I wanted to have enough room to get my corner. And if you go into the 10, you don't have quite enough room. Ah. So I went out to nine and a half. So all of these squares are nine and a half mm -hmm. unfinished. And you can layer several. I, I usually do at least four, three or four at a time, just because it, it saves a lot of time. Yeah, it makes it go much faster. Yep. So then you're just gonna cut off that little edge because it's extra. And it really is a gentle curve. It's easy to cut with the rotary cutter. Yeah, yeah I totally. know people get a little, you know, weaked little out nervous. about curves, yeah. but it just goes together so easily. So these these are done. And then this, this set, you just, there's just a tiny bit of difference in that curve. It is always fascinating to me that that curve doesn't equal this curve. It's not it, exact, yeah. yeah. It's, I'm just like, why wouldn't that work? But it just doesn't, I don't know. Yeah. I'm not a math girl, so I don't have to think too hard about it. But, I'm glad you know. somebody figured it out for <laughs> That's us. Right. That's right, <laughs> agreed. And then I, um, I just mix and matched. I didn't do like these two go with these two. I literally just grabbed whatever color I felt like as okay. I went along. Um, if you're worried about it, you can kind of set them up. But typically what I do, and this is kind of like a lazy, ha a lazy girl hack, right? I, I mix and match until I get down to about the last 10. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. And then you're and like, then wait, I, make I have sure I go through like and I'm like, look. okay, these are the ones that are going to go. And I just kind of separate out those yes. last I think few. because we tend to pick our favorite colors first without, uh -huh. not without thinking about it, but just, we tend to, yeah. you know, all do of a sudden it's like. you want this pinned? No, no, I do not. Because I didn't, I don't pin. I don't pin when either. I do it. Yeah. I don't. I always line up. I do it exactly like this. So I start, I do, I do a few little, little stitches yep. and I'm going to have to move this out here here and yeah. then I just start pulling and turning so yep, I do a that's few stitches. exactly how I do it too and it, it's very gentle yeah it just, I go it, nice and slow at about the halfway well probably about three-fourths of the way I check to see if my two ends are gonna sure line up still match, yep. and then I hold that to um, ease in anywhere that there might be a little discrepancy right. yeah. The first time I learned to do this, someone recommended pinning like a lot, and it made uh -huh. it, in my opinion, way more difficult. It, it right. gets really ruffly yes. then, because, and you're looking at all this fabric. It's so much easier to me. To me, to me it's like um, it's like merging traffic. You yes. Just, you want to zipper it. Yes. Yeah. Pinning makes me, it, the more pins, it seems like it makes me nervous. It's like, uh, oh, okay. I've, I've got to get this just right, you know. All right. Well, all right, so I now get we that have, too. So now you're just going to snowball two corners. Which two? And they're these opposite ones. Okay. What would so happen this one if we here, did these? And this oh one my, here. It would be a completely different, different right? Quilt. 
So, I love that. And you're just gonna sew, if you are a line drawer or if you wanna press it, you can. If you have diagonal seam tape, it's just straight across, corner to corner. Point to point. Point to point, yep. Mm -hmm. I got mine on there. I'm gonna line this one up. And every block is made the same. So simple now, I love that. And just like that, you've made the whole just quilt. Just like that. <laughs> Almost, yep. almost. You're almost done. So we're gonna we're gonna trim this you off. You only have to do it like 40 more times. Right. <laughs> Press it back. It went together very quickly. It's one of those ones that just it's it's rewarding. Yeah. Yeah. All right. And then really, I started with this center medallion as far as the layout goes. Uh huh. I have halves going out from the middles, and then quarters in this section and three quarters in the corner. Oh, so I love honestly that. just I love follow it. the layout, lay it out. Just, you know, you can do it just like this or you can do whatever you want. That's I, what had, I was going to say. And you I had with. three or yeah. four different ones that I had to choose from before I actually put it together. That will be next it. year. Settled on it. Yeah. yeah so, so you can see how that just, goes. it just sets right in like that. Yep. They're all the same. You turn them however, whichever direction you want. I love that. You and know. those pops of white really, really make those blocks stand out. Yeah, it's so, so fun. Oh, here's one exactly the same. Just there right go. there. There we go. Now you'll never know. How will they know? They'll never know. That block <laughs> just looks great. Well, well that, that is yeah, awesome. Yeah, I hope you guys enjoy it. It's super easy and fun, and it looks a little bit tricky, I think. It, it, it's one of those ones that... Drunkard's Path always feels a little bit modern to yes. me, and you're like, okay, I don't know if I can do that. But you totally you can. You totally can. Great. can. Yeah, yep. we love super the easy. So I All can't right, wait well, to see what you did with yours. Well, we're gonna see. All right. So everybody, this is my quilt, my it's pineapple quilt. So my, pretty. My drunkard's path pineapple. That's what I'm calling it. And we're making pineapples. And I've got this cool backing on here. That's pretty. And mine's a little bigger. These blocks, as you make them, are about 16 inches. And so. It's the same drunkard's path with just a little bit of extra stuff going on. I love that. So to make my quilt, what you're going to need is one packet, one five inch charm pack of the different greens, and I use the Kona Wondrous Woods. You're also going to need one packet of the Sunburst or the Citrus Burst palette um, with all the yellows and the, you know, all it's those cool that they come oranges. It's cool such a variety of yeah, colorways like this. Green. It's very cool. You're going to need some background about four and a half yards. Our backing is going to be two and three quarter yards of a 108. This is a 108. Um, or if you use regular fabric, it's five and a half yards. And then our border fabric out here is one and a half yards. And I just went with the green to kind of accent the little uh, pi um, pineapple tops. So, so cool. let me show so you how great. to do I this. So this makes a quilt that is about 75 by 91. And I don't know if you noticed, but I used the little MSQC chick Oh, quilting that's pattern. So cute. It is cute. You know, he just needed a tropical holiday, Absolutely. and so I just <laughs> threw him on this quilt. This it. is the block we're talking about right here, and I actually used the Essex linen, the Essex linen as the background, which I think, you know, in my mind, it was like pineapples and sand, you oh, know, yeah. that okay. sort of thing. Yeah, that's great. And so I had a I had a couple of thoughts going on with that, mm -hmm. but I, I love did Essex linen. I did like um, I do too. cheat a little. So in our triple playbook that we came out with, there is a quilt in here that is made and done and has never been tutorialed. Yes. It oh, is nice. this pineapple quilt, and I thought it needed a tutorial because it's so it's, adorable. Oh, it's called Tropical Paradise. It sure is. So cute. Tropical That's Paradise. Great. And, of course, when we did the book, we used so ombre it's a fabric. it's on your... Um, your bird of paradise. Totally a twist on the bird of paradise. Nice. Which that. to me looks like the COVID quilting block. Well, you know, it's got, it's a little <laughs> got that round with the spiky ends on it. And so yeah. we just changed it to the pineapple and put some spiky ends on one side for the pineapple top. And I'm going to show you how to do that. Now we have just made Drunkard's Path twice. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And so I'm pretty sure you're good on that little curved circle. Yes. Except yep. so yours my squares. Same, just a, what, yeah, eight and a half. My or something? squares are cut at eight and a half. Okay. Like, I've okay. got this all pinned together. Hang on. Awesome. And so my square is eight and a half like this. And so when I lay my ruler on here, I'm just going to put it on the eight and a half line like this. Yep. And I'm going to cut this out, and I'm not going to use this piece. Right. Yeah. That just and so then tossed. my color, my color comes in here. So um, I think what we'll do is we'll just go ahead and make one more. Okay. And I yeah. have to turn Might this well. for oh, for, for my your lefty. for my left hand. So I'm just going to move this over here, and then I'm just going to cut this right here. Nice. And then um, 
And then I always, I always leave my ruler on top after I've cut to make sure that I actually got it on the line. Because the curve always feels like, you know, and then Some, you're like, yeah. I just want to make sure that it's right it could, before I move the yeah, ruler. It yeah. could slip a little. All right, so Misty, I'll let you go ahead and sew Absolutely. that on there. And we're going to talk about the next block. So this next block right here that we're going to talk about is a half square triangle. And we take two colors to do that. And basically what I did was I just took two pieces. You know, these are my green and my yellow. I put those together. It could be, it could be orange. It's just one anything. pack, right? Yeah, anything. So basically, yeah. So what we did was we just drew the line, sewed on both sides, and got two half square triangles and mm -hmm. trimmed them to four and a half. Okay. And I'm pretty sure, you know, um, do you think we need to do that or do you think we're good with that? We could do we it. We could do it. All right. It doesn't matter. Missy's going to be we real busy today. We have lots of time. Today. That's all right. Got a little right. off on the end, but it'll be all right. So if you will sew both of those no together. Worries. The Essex linen does have a little side. bit more of a stretch than the yes. uh, actually, regular cotton. Yes, that was actually a little bit of a learning curve for me because um, the because of the way this is woven, it's a, it's a looser weave. And I was I had a hold of that bottom piece, and it was a little bit longer. So, uh -huh. um, it you know, yeah, so just try I just caught it right hard. away, and just make sure that you keep but your if hand it's on that. Within a quarter of an inch, it'll be hidden in the seam. So right, no worries. right. There we go. All right, so we're going to cut this in half, and then we're going to square this to four and a half. And you can use any squaring tool that you'd like. I have my clearly perfect here, and I'm just going to lay this on here and trim around. And you just need one of these per block. Oh, just want to make sure that's right. So we'll go ahead and let you do that. Then what we're going to do, we, we make three of these for our block. So I have the three different colors here. And, um, and what we're going to do now is we're going to do these stems. And our stems are wonky legs, which you guys know I love. I've done one. So for that top corner, you need one plain block, one wonky leg block, and then another wonky leg block over here. And so what I do, how I make my wonky legs is I actually take my piece, and you can see I already have a piece cut out of here, but I just take my scraps and I just sew right here, making sure that middle, you know, that square crosses the center middle. Mm -hmm. So we should have enough to do this on both. Grab another, um, grab another, another square green? charm. Yeah, just a different green. Like a light, oh yeah, maybe this one. Yeah, that'd be perfect. And so what I do is I just kind of press that back, and then I'm going to trim it off like this. Line my ruler. Let my square be the, um, you your know, the, the, the guide. And then we're going to go ahead, and we're going to take this, and we're going to make sure that this crosses this part, and it can go anywhere along here. So we can have, you know, the long pineapple top, a short pineapple top. If you look at the pineapples behind me, they're all different. I will let Misty decide. Ooh, I get to play with it. All right, I'll give <laughs> you it a little. You get to choose. Mine, I'm so um, symmetrical that mine tend to come out almost identical. I find the same thing when and, I make uh, wonky legs. I think we just have like a muscle memory or something. We do. I'm sure we do. Here we go. All right, so if you'll press that back, sure. then I will um, trim it off. Right. And we will put this block together. I'm going to move this up a little bit. The last component. Right. So I'm just going to trim this off right here. And I like to save as much of this as I can. And this is where that piece I put on first, you saw, had that little, um, cut, out the little cut out of it. Yes. Yeah, so this is what it, what it is right here. And so there's our little block. And so let's go ahead and assemble this. And I just need one of these. So the whole stem thingy is just like a four patch? It is. That's awesome. awesome. So it's this way, or actually we could use this one. Oh, well, although it matches, so let's do oh, this one. Oh, that's okay. I like all the different ones. All the shades. The Here's my other legs over here. And this is going to be one unit that we sew together. So Misty, go ahead and sew these together. And it sews together just like a four patch. Okay. Mm -hmm. like you want to keep your color, your yellow color, toward the pineapple side. And you want to make sure that your legs go in on this side and in on that side. So they all go together to make that pineapple block. And open them up. Yep. And then just Ooh. put them together. There we go. There I was we like, go. what happened? It was all flipped. 
There we go. And then this makes our pineapple. And what we're going to do on this is we're just going to go, we're just going to put three together like this, only this way. <laughs> this way, this way, and then over here. Actually, let's put this dark orange down here. So then you've just got a, n a larger four Right. That's cool. Here we go. So, Natalie, if you'll press this nice and flat. Yep. And isn't the linen love, fun to sew on? I love it, yeah. It's just a, it's it's a different it, texture, and it's, you know, people are always like, why do you always use light backgrounds? And I'm like, because it's better for the camera. <laughs> but, uh, you know, at the end of the day, it's fun to switch out your, your background sometime. Hmm. Try new things. Love it. All right, so now this is just going to go together like a four patch. So these two will go together. And then these two will go together. And the, the only thing I really watch on this is I watch to make sure that this bottom little seam yeah. is lined the, up. The curve. Yeah, yeah, the curve is lined up. Yeah. I don't iron one, one way or the other because the curve naturally, this wants to press toward the color. Mm. And I like, to, I like to let it do that because actually on this, <laughs> if these are lined up and this is a little short, see how that's just a hair short? You can actually, the feed dogs will take in that little bottom section if you take mm -hmm. a hold of that top. So I'm going to let you go ahead and um, okay. start that. And just watch those two seams to make sure that All they right. they line they up. work out. Although, if it isn't perfect, it isn't, it's okay. you know, it's okay. It's okay. Pineapples are not all perfect and the same. They're all unique. They're all different. Hopefully I got it close. You did. All right, so now what we're going to do is we are going to open this up. And you got did very well, my girl. Thank you. And we'll do this, and we're just going to put this with this. And we'll match that center seam and this, the and first this. seam. So where your blocks come together, you want to make sure that those line up and your, your seams come together. But because they're such nice big blocks, it's not hard. It's not yeah. hard at all. They're matching up nicely. Yep. Got your iron ready? Yes. <laughs> I was actually there. just thinking I, I I can't wait till the next drunkard's cup challenge. I know, right? Because there's so many cool things to do. There really are. We do we do the drunkard's path has actually been included every year in our triple play. This is our third year. And so uh, it's fun to see all the different things. All right, so go ahead and press that. All right. So happy. And you've used the Drunkard's Path several times so on your show times. at yeah. Home with I, Misty. I love it. It's just a great tool. It was one I was afraid to try, but now it really is one of my favorite blocks to make. I, I really enjoy it. I was always terrified of curves. Yeah, me too. Like it's something I just thought I would never do. Thought I would right. be too afraid. Yes. <laughs> and I love them. So here's our little pineapple, <laughs> our so take cute. on the pineapple, our tropical paradise, if you will. I and love of course, it. these are all going the same direction. So they just go here cute. like this. It'd be fun if you turned them yeah. and the second row went the other way. Uh -huh. I mean, I mean you can do anything you want to. Absolutely. And so this is my take on our drunkard's path. And uh, just really enjoyed making it. So we made 20 big 16-inch blocks. Again, how, how big it's is our quilt? It's 75 by 91. Yeah, 75 by 91. Nice. And yeah. our backing. And our backing is so fun. So fun. It looks really tropical, I think, like little surfboards or something. Oh, yeah. And what size was your border? My border is about six. It's six and six inches. Okay, awesome. I was thinking six or six and a half. But then I remembered our ruler rule. Yes. Oh, yeah. You okay. know, people always All ask, right. how do we cut our borders? And it's literally... What ruler is laying yes. on the table? That's the size border it gets. <laughs> it's true. So this is a six inch border, um, and our I bound it with the same green. You know, I wanted to just keep it kind really of really fun, really fun and it's clean. Beautiful. And so yeah. we really enjoyed doing the drunkard's path thing. Well, we hope you enjoyed this month's triple play on the drunkard's path, and that you'll give these curves a try. See you next month. Bye, everybody. Hi, everybody. It's Jenny from the Missouri Star Quilt Company. We hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you aren't already part of the Missouri Star Quilt Company family, be sure to subscribe so you won't miss a thing. And if you click that bell, it'll notify you every time a new tutorial comes out. See you next Friday.